hanging out on a Friday in uh, the middle of a walkway. And Y'all getting married? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're absolutely getting we're married. Getting yep. Married right now. Right. Hell yeah, brother. It's incest, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, hanging out in the middle of a walkway in uh, downtown Las Vegas, you know. It's, uh, just got done playing a rockin' show last night, so it was a good time. Oh, I'm Taylor from Allure. I, I, I sing. and I'm Parker. I play drums. What is it like living in Las Vegas? Um, so uh, him and I, have, well, we moved out here in 99, so we've been here for 22 years, so we pretty much grew up here. Uh, honestly, I can say that we're pretty desensitized to the whole Vegas experience, like, you know, I get so many people that come up to us and say, oh, you know, Vegas is uh, this, oh, it's Vegas is so crazy, and it's, uh, I, I mean, I was seeing advertisements for strip clubs when I was eight years old, and uh, the, the whole gambling thing and everything like that. I mean, it's a great time. Honestly, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Uh, we've played all over the country, and uh, this place just feels like home. Uh, everything's open 24 hours. You can get food whenever you want. You can uh, drink as late as you want, party as long as you want. Uh, it's, it's just a great place to live. Yeah? yeah. You just pretty much said it all. All right. <laughs> Hell yeah. How hard is it to keep a relationship in Las Vegas? <laughs> You know oh, a bit about that one, don't you? Uh, I do, yeah. Uh, so I would say it's pretty difficult. Um, I was in a long-term relationship from the age of 20 to 25, and then uh, so I feel like that's when everyone, uh, for the most part, gets to uh, get all their dating out during their early 20s. And I hit the dating scene when I was 25, and it is just an absolute nightmare here. Uh, so many people are. Everyone's so fickle, and uh, there's a lot of, I, as much as I don't like to use this term, I feel like it describes it the best, there's a lot of like fake people. Um, everyone is very obsessed with their, their image and their, uh, how, th how things look, uh, other people's perception and things like that out here. And so it's a lot harder for, I feel like, people to find an actual genuine connection with uh, anyone. So, uh, I mean, that's why I have been, uh, haven't been in a relationship for like three years. <laughs> it's been so hard to find anything. And I mean, he knows too, there's a lot of crazies out here, right? Yeah, it happens. Also, everyone is just so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Everyone's personality is on the internet now. So it's really hard to like meet real people. Like you said, everyone's fake. You get these people that look one way on the internet, not look necessarily, but even act one way on the internet. And then you meet them in person and it's, they're not like that, so it's uh, it's tough, but it's tough everywhere. Yeah. Please, if you can, get as descriptive as you can. What has been the worst party and the worst bathroom you've ever seen out here in Vegas? Oh, worst party. I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to answer that. I mean, the worst party, but also simultaneously the best one, was probably our Halloween party in 2019. It was only the worst because there were like 85 people in our house and it was way too crowded. Yeah. And uh, only had one broken bottle though. Yeah. So that was good. Um, but we. Th they broke my soap dispenser. <laughs> there was shattered glass in our bathroom for probably about two hours. Oh, so then that means there's two broken bottles probably. Yes. And then there was uh, some girl passed out in the bathroom saying that she couldn't get out. Uh, but our bathroom door uh, in our downstairs doesn't lock. So I don't know what was going on. I don't think she, I think she just like couldn't get out. She um, eventually got out. Yeah, she, <laughs> she eventually got out. Okay. I had someone come out to me after that party and say, we can fit 13 people in your laundry room. And I said, I, how do you know that? And he's like, your Halloween party. I said, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, um, worst bathroom, though. worst bathroom here. Oh, I mean, most bars in the general vicinity of where we're at don't have great bathrooms. I'll just go with that. I feel, yeah, honestly, uh, Fremont Street area has, has I would say, takes the cake. Um, there's, or, <laughs> as much as I uh, like the place, their bathroom just sucks. Uh, Double Down Saloon. <laughs> oh, my God. that It's just like, it. Uh, there's stickers on everything. It just looks like shit. It smells like shit. That's part of the vibe, though. Part so, vibe. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, I haven't seen... Maybe like a 7-Eleven down here too. Like the, any convenience store bathrooms down here, absolutely disgusting. Do not go in there. Yeah. For the most part though, the casinos get maintained, so I haven't really seen any bad casino bathrooms. But yeah, those are probably the worst. Have you, have you tried the mob casinos? It's awesome. 
the uh, mob museum itself. I haven't been in the bathroom in there though. Actually, I think I did go to the bathroom. I have not been. Is why is the mob museum bathroom bad? <laughs> Uh, it's shout out Mob Museum <laughs> right behind yeah. us here. Uh, I didn't have a bad experience in that bathroom. So I did not, no. Good. Yeah, I think we're fine. Um, no, there's a speakeasy underneath it, though. So I don't think there used to be a speakeasy, but there used to be like a, a basement where they used to, you know. I don't know if that building has any ties with the mob necessarily. No, it used to be the old courthouse, actually. So there's actually a, a, a mock courtroom in one of the rooms over there, so. Who is the best 90s band? That's such a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best I'm 90s gonna, band. I'm going to be biased and uh, because technically their their first stuff came out in, in the 90s is Deftones. All right. That's a good choice. Oh, for real? No. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, if I had to pick one one nineties band, I know this is so. That's very difficult. Probably for heavy music, I'd say, just because of everything they've done, is like Corn, or, uh, and technically speaking, it did come out in ninety nine, right? Uh, Slipknot. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah. But I mean. You know, uh, yeah, that's those are probably, yeah, Corn Slipknot, Deftones, the Holy Trinity, you know. <laughs> Without naming any names, what has been the worst local show and why? Go back 16 years. <laughs> We've been doing this. The further back the safer from. The worst local show. Man. I, mean, I remember one that we didn't necessarily play, but it was, um, I forgot which tour it was, but it was like, no, 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 it, no, no bands did anything bad, but on the tour it was, it was Winds of Plague, Stick to Your Guns, uh, Oceano, and it was at the farm, and like, it was a show I'd been looking forward to a long time, because I love all those bands that are on that bill, and we showed up, and not long after, the show got shut down, and like, a ton of cop cars showed up. And I, was there? I think there was a fight or something. something yeah. And the whole show got shut down. And that was uh, when Oceano actually did their infamous house show. And they did their house show. And like, I never, I didn't get to go because I didn't yeah. know where the house was. Yeah. Um, but oh, there's that one. And then, do you remember the Ghost Inside show? You, at the you weren't s- supposed to name any names, no, and no, here you it, are. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. It has oh nothing my to god, do with dude. That. Okay. It has but nothing to do with that's that. what I was gonna talk about. But uh, there was a show. And they were playing when that happened i know but there was a show uh that happened at a uh a venue that is no longer around anymore um and uh it was the craziest thing i've ever seen in my entire life and at a show like to date i would say um a huge fight broke out between security and a bunch of people that were there for a particular band um and they were encouraging the fighting um, and this venue had, uh, uh, skateboards on the walls and, uh, these people who were fighting security were tearing the skateboards off of the walls and hitting security guards. Uh, the they, the yeah, hospital. they, yeah. they smacked security guard in the head and uh, he went to the hospital. I was watching this from on top of a, a skate ramp and I'm looking down at this security guard that's got a guy in a headlock as four other guys are on top of him, like kicking him. Um, it was an insane thing to watch. Uh, I'm honestly surprised that they allowed the show to continue on. They actually let the rest of the show play, uh, despite the fact that a security guard was going to the hospital. The venue almost got shut down. The cops showed up. It was absolute insanity. Um, And to the Ghost Inside's credit, when they got on stage that night, they were um, very, like, smart about the situation. They addressed it properly. They were super professional. They told everyone, like, we don't understand what you guys are, like, this is not okay at shows and uh yeah so they they definitely helped redeem the show yeah so uh um 20 it was it had to be like 2012 yeah it was it was og ghost inside it was like faith and forgiveness and like the their first record like absolutely yeah <laughs> It was insane, but uh, yeah, that was a, a really gnarly show. Hardest, hardest thing I've ever had to watch being at a show. 
I think I was probably like, yeah, I was not, I was not very old at that point. Out of you both, and if you both are two good boys, then fine. Out of your band, who's most likely to get the most fucked up and have the cops called on them? It's not me. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I am. I'm, I'm pretty responsible. I think if it's, uh, yeah, both of us are pretty, I would say you're more likely than me because I feel like the majority of the time I, I'm the one who's reining everybody in uh, and being like, hey, we got to go do this, we got to go do that, and you're the one who's already too drunk to do anything. Yeah, but I don't get drunk to the point of being stupid and cops getting called ever. Yeah. That's that's very true. We, we, we're a pretty tame band overall. I would say if anything... Uh, our our guitar player Drew is probably the one that would maybe have something happen to him. Like, let's say five six years ago, it would have been Drew. Five six years ago, it definitely would have been <laughs> Drew. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely found him passed out on the, a sidewalk in the middle of a s particular city. So, um, it's uh, yeah, I, I would say pre kids, yeah, Drew for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, out of you both, who makes the best French toast? Um, to sure. Uh, I'm a terrible cook, so by default, it's going to be Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't, I I make, you know, pretty good breakfast food. I mostly do omelets and stuff, but yeah, I could probably kick this guy's ass in cooking, so. <laughs> Does that mean he cooks for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. I just go get food every day. He cooks for himself. Yeah, yeah. I know that this guy will never. I'll never find him in the kitchen. The funniest thing was during uh, it, the lockdown and quarantine and everything. I had to show him how to cook a steak on the grill. So he was like, "How do I do it?" And I'm like, "What do you mean? You're a grown man. How do you not know how to do this?" <laughs> yeah, I just like I'm just making sure. I don't know how to do it. Dude, I don't know. We appreciate the honesty. <laughs> who is in your dream wrestling team, and who are you taking down? Dream wrestling team. Does oh. this have to be wrestlers or? Man. Um, I mean, if we're talking like WWE wrestlers, I'm picking like Rey Mysterio. I'm picking um, Brock Lesnar. Um, uh, no. No? That's, that's your team. <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm maybe. I guess maybe. I guess we're we can be on the same team. I guess if you want to throw the rock in there, it's so I. You're fighting each other. Fighting each other. Okay, there we go. Um, I mean, if I'm picking those kind of wrestlers, I would say yeah, those two. Sting probably. Uh, hmm. He's taking down the rock because he's got the rock in his team. Good luck. Uh, well, the Brock Lesnar, obviously. Didn't he already do that? He's a giant man. He's very scary. I I wouldn't want anything to do with Brock Lesnar. If I saw him standing at like staring at me in a dark alley, I would be scared shitless. I would disappear for sure. Yeah. Do you have anyone else that you would like to add to your team besides? Um, probably. I'm gonna say Sting. He's an OG. Uh, and Kane, because Kane was like my favorite. Oh, Kane was a shit. Yeah. Kane was. Kane was better. Yeah. Those are top three. I would say. Yeah. How'd you guys come up with the name? And like, you know, when were you gonna see your next song? Um, so, uh, funny story. We actually we used to be called something different um, for about seven years. We were called the. Uh, we used to be called. <laughs> we used to be called. We gave it hell. Um, and uh, we just found that a lot of people were, m yeah, mispronouncing our name, uh, on marquees, on flyers. On we would get give them hell, give it all. Um, and I feel. We gave a hell, yeah. Um, and I'm like, there are four simple words in the English language. Why is it so hard for anyone to say? So um, we just felt like it wasn't fitting with the style of music we were playing anymore, so we decided to switch. And um, our guitar player's old band was actually called Allura back in, like, 2008, seven. seven, yeah. And um, it came from a, a, a 1940s comedy movie. Yeah, called She Wouldn't Say Yes. And uh, it was the name of this temptress, and her name was Allura, and they liked it. So I just said, hey, what if we use that name? And uh, Drew said, I mean, if we can't come up with anything else, then sure. And so it just stuck. 
Um, and then our next release um, we're working on right now, we actually just put out a song last month. It's called Slither. Um, it's a, a real life uh, telling of how I got a parasite in my foot uh, when I went to Thailand and uh, me trying to get rid of it. So it was a whole excursion, but the song's heavy. Uh, it's unfortunately we didn't get to play it yesterday because <laughs> of uh, the way the uh, whole show was set up. So uh, it is what it is. But you know that song's out. We got a music video for that and everything. Uh, we also put out a couple other songs, uh, Eros and Robbie the Sheath, um, and yeah. So I think our next release is probably in the next month or two. Yeah, we'll we'll probably release a song or two before the end of the year. So we've been sitting on music for the entirety of two years so <laughs> just slowly trying to put everything out now so it's all all in due time how did the how did the pandemic affect your guys' band in your music career Ooh, um i feel like we were we were on a pretty solid trajectory uh when we rebranded in 2019 became allure officially uh we we dropped brand new music and uh everything was going well we had uh we toured in 2019 we had a tour set up for uh, March of uh, 2020, so it seemed like everything was going our way, and then uh, as soon as that happened, um, tour got canceled, um, everything kind of went downhill for us, but I will say uh, it did kind of force us to sit down and just write, so uh, I think that's what a lot of musicians did, at least the ones that were able to be productive, And uh, but I was over at, uh, I mean, we were all over at Drew's house probably like two three times a week just working on music uh recording trying to get everything together we shot what two music videos during yeah i think we did three music videos during quarantine so um it it really kind of forced us to uh write a bunch of music and, and get a lot of ideas out and uh honestly i mean i feel like this is the some of the, you know, every band fucking says this. I hate it so much. But it, it's, I, I, I'm really proud of this material. I won't say, I won't say it's the best shit we've ever done. I'll just say I'm really happy with how everything turned out. And I'm super proud of it. Uh, I think this music's awesome. And uh, I, I'm really just excited for the rest of the world to hear everything else that we have coming out. Hey, at least it wasn't big things coming soon. <laughs> Here's the announcement for the announcement. Or announcing an announcement. What's up? Yeah. What is next for you guys? Um, next up for us is probably just putting out some new music. Uh, I think we are um, just trying to put out as much music as we possibly can. And then uh, we're, we played one show in California uh, about a week ago, and um, we're trying to get hit the road again in 2023. So uh, we've, we've got some opportunities in the works, so trying to uh, make those a reality. And, yeah, just uh, trying to push, get the rest of our... Uh, new music out there as soon as we possibly can and uh, yeah hopefully having 2023 be super busy for us so that's that's pretty much it <laughs> um, so uh, you can find us on social media uh, our Instagram is at uh, Allura Sounds uh, you can find us on TikTok same name at Allura Sounds uh, Twitter I think is Allura Band uh, Allura Sounds on Facebook um, I think that's all the social media we have um, and uh, yeah, uh, big things coming for 2023. <laughs> uh, <laughs> big things coming. Uh, shout out to Lamgo. Thank you guys so much for uh, having us. Thank we really guys. appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, Allura for 2023. Uh, big president. Things big things coming. <laughs>